Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm on and today I will review the second studio album by the hip hop trio, the kind of early punk band, but you know, mostly known as a hip hop trio, the Beastie Boys, with their second album, like I said, Pause Boutique, released in 1989, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, released in 1989 after their monumental, you know, their major label debut album, License to Ill. They had some demos before that, I believe, even some albums, arguably, but those are not very well known. Yeah, Polywox 2, uh, which was an EP. Yeah, and they, I believe they had some demos before this, but yeah, they were, they were kind of a hardcore punk band before that, but they did uh, go to rap rock and hip hop after this, License to Ill and of course Paul's Boutique. So uh, this is like a really acclaimed album. Um, I'm not even sure if people really acknowledge this album for what it really is, but uh, people do really like this album. I'm looking if it made like, you know, a top 500 list or something like that. Um, well, yeah, and a lot of like greatest albums ever list. Yeah, and it is on 156 of Rolling Stones, 500 greatest albums of all time, so it is on there. I'm not sure if License to Ill has that same accolade, but maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, fucking License to Ill is 217, and this one is 136, I believe. So, both of their first albums are on the Rolling Stone list, and I believe they're, um, only their first albums are on there. So, um, yeah, this was produced by the Beastie Boys, the Dust Brothers, and Mario Cataldo Jr. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, there you go. I'm not even sure who the Dust Brothers are, so there you go. So, the cover contains literally a cover of Paul's Boutique, so I'm not sure what that is, but I do like the cover a lot. You know, it's just like of a random boutique store. It's, it's kind of cute, it's kind of you know, a nice cover, I would say. Just uh, you know, not nice store right there. So there you go. Okay, we have 15 songs. To all the girls is the first one. This is just kind of like a short introduction song. Not a lot going on here. Just you know, the members introducing themselves and just saying what's in store next. And then we have Shake Your Run, which starts with a really uh, addictive, like kind of opening drum fill. I do really like, like the drum fill a lot, or you know, what they sampled at least. I do like that a lot. Um, yeah. I actually like how, how how all the you know how everyone sounds on this record. I do really enjoy that. Production is really on top. I just really love the percussion of Shake Your Run, but it's really catchy, it's really addictive to listen to, so yeah, definitely a great track. I really enjoyed it. Um yeah, it's just like a really catchy opening track, really, really great opener for the album if you don't count to all the girls, which I don't personally. So then we got Johnny Royale, which was um, a good track. I enjoyed it. Um, the track does kind of like great on me for a little bit, you know, eventually. But the production and just uh, the overall rhyme scheme of the of the boys just did keep me captivated enough to listen to continue listening. So there's that. Then we have Eggman, which was a very uh, pretty explosive track, I would say. A uh, really enjoyable track too, I think. Um, really good and uh, yeah, it's really explosive too. It's just really a, a, a aggressive kind of like tongue in cheek track, kind of everything that the, the Beastie Boys were building up to up until this point. And they just kind of released it on Eggman. Really great track, really underrated. I would say one of the most underrated Beastie Boys tracks from the 80s. I would say. So there you go. Then we have High Plains Drifter, which was. Four minutes long. Um, can't really remember this one right now, but I did remember that it was a good follow-up to Eggman. Not as memorable as Eggman, of course, but still good. Still enjoyed it. So um, yeah, definitely goes in my book. Then we have the Sound of Science, which was later a compilation album, I believe, with the same name, uh, Greatest Hits album, I believe. Uh, of course, uh, you know, a word play on the Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Um, this is a really fun track, a lot of like great sampling on this track, um, it's 3 minutes long, it's really like tongue in cheek. Uh, it's really enjoyable I think, the title is funny, the production is good, uh, the rhyme schemes by, by the guys is um, you know just really fun and just really uh, addictive to listen to, so yeah, just a great track. 
Then we have three minute rule and this is kind of a pretty vile track. Probably the most uh, raunchy track on air. And that was something that he said that you could suck his mom's dick or something. Like whenever I listen to this track, I definitely think about you know this track influencing Eminem, you know, to to a certain degree. So the Beastie Boys are definitely you know if if you love Eminem, then you know you, you gotta love this track because this track arguably created Eminem or you know the, the largest deal album, but kind of both ways I guess. But this track makes it really obvious for me. It's it's a really like. Uh, like dead center kind of like a really stops you in your track kind of centerpiece uh, song really really raunchy really direct and confront confronting uh yeah a really stellar track i think really like takes you takes you by the throat and just takes you for a ride i guess just you know it's really one of those tracks where you just stand still and you just kind of like acknowledge the explosion or something it's like wow and then we get Hey Ladies, which is um, arguably the biggest hit of this album. I'm not even sure if it was a single. Maybe it's a bit too tongue in cheek to be a single. Yeah, yeah, it was the first single and it's uh, pretty much the biggest single of this album. Um, really nice kind of opening riff right there, or however you want to call that. And then the Beastie Boys comes in, come in and um, yeah, the track just overall just propels to a really grandiose state and I, I think that they really pulled it off here, really uh, great stuff. Really enjoyable, um, I think you should check it out, uh, arguably the catchiest song of the album, really easy to get into. Uh, you know, whenever it goes into, hey ladies, and then the cowbell comes in. And then the second time it's even funnier because it's, it's, it's a bit more um, minimal, I think, a bit more slower, down tempo. Like they go, they go like, um, oh yeah, hey ladies, get funky. <laughs> Just how, how how it sounds on the song is really funny. Like you know, it's it's really like ear to detail, I guess. But it's a really funny detail how, how they say it, and I do also really like whenever they go really quiet in the end, and then then it picks back up and then it ends. It's it's yeah, you know, it's just a lot of like studio fooleries, like a lot of mixing around messing around but it's just it's just fun messing around you know it's a fun mess in a way it's it's the best kind of mess you know just messing around just having fun kind of like that then we have five piece chicken dinner and this is just kind of a really um kind of hillbilly kind of ridiculous kind of uh sequel or sequel kind of a transition kind of, kind of a really one of the weirdest um how would you call this one of the weirdest transitions ever. There's like there's like one description for this, or like one title acronym for this uh, for songs like this. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, interludes. I guess this is one of the weirdest interludes ever, but it's it's there. It's funny. It's um, yeah. It's it. I did not expect this though. This is like a really like uh, out of left field curveball song interlude. But there you go. It's it's funny, but it's it's weird as shit. And then we get arguably to one of my favorite Beastie Boys songs ever. Arguably one of their heaviest songs in you know in their rap uh, career, in their most well-known era, in their major label era, uh, which is "Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun." I, I fucking love how heavy the the kind of riffs are. The bass is really like low brow. It's like almost hits brown notes and shit like that. The way they say "Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun" it's so badass. And it also helped that I was playing a shooter while I was listening to the track, so that definitely helped. Um, I just felt the fucking track, it's just great sampling all around, the, the riffs, the bass is really heavy, it just, like, it all hits you, you know, like, literally, looking down the barrel of a gun. It really sounds like they are, like, actually at the barrel of a gun and they actually, you know, are trying to wrap themselves out of there, however you want to envision that, but... It's a really ambitious track. It's really uh, like just fantastic, really heavy, really low brow, but still great. Yeah, pretty much my favorite track of the album. It's just such a badass song. I love it. Then we get Car Thief, and this was also a really catchy track. Kind of like the same vein as Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun, but a bit more, you know, a bit um, less intense, I would say. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it, really enjoyable track, still has kind of like that uh, suspenseful kind of feel to the track, but it's definitely a bit more, you know, 
less suspense, less um, tension than looking down the barrel of a gun. Still good track, good follow-up track, um, but I just see it as you know a weaker version of Barrel, but it's still really good though, it's still a good uh, song. Then we got What Comes Around and um, yeah, just kind of a nice casual song, uh, not a lot to say here, it was just uh, enjoyable, fun and uh, I would recommend it. Then we got Shed Rack, which was the second single of the album, and I can't honestly re re really remember this one, but it is a fun track. Uh, it is really popular, so I guess uh, I should listen to it a bit more, but you know, so far I really enjoyed it and it was a catchy track, so it's, it's kind of like Hey Lady, but just a bit, uh, you know, just a bit more random, I guess, like less about one subject like Hey Lady as well, so there you go. And then we got B-Boy. Bala Baza, I think that's a wordplay on Bolognese maybe, if you even say it like that. Do you say Bolognese in... Because I think that's a Dutch word, right? Or, or is Bolognese also an English word? I don't even know. I think you say it the same as in Dutch as in English though, so there you go. So, B-Boy Bolognese, I'm just gonna call it Bolognese. It's pretty much a uh, how how many tracks are are this? Two, four, six, eight, nine. There are nine different B boy songs, and they're all sp split up to you know into different parts. At least with my version, maybe on like a vinyl or something or like a CD, they are one humongous track. But for me, they were all different tracks, which. I did prefer, you know, if it was just one big song, like, you know, described in Wikipedia, instead of like, you know, what I have right now, separate tracks. Not that it really ruins anything for me, but it is a bit, uh, you know, it does kind of annoy me, like, a skip every minute or so, it's kind of annoying, but, it, you know, whatever. Uh, but this is interesting though, it's really diverse, it just kind of shows off what the Beastie Boys have been building up to up until this point and I think they made a fine they did a fine job here. They made nine different kind of mini songs right there and they just kinda of combined combined it into one like epic hip hop track. You know, a, a hip hop a hip hop epic. That's that's kind of crazy. Like a twelve minute hip hop song. Yeah, um I I fuck with that, so there you go. Hip hop epics. <laughs> So uh, there you go, this, this is a great album, uh, my favorites of the album are Shake Your Rump, uh, Eggman I would say, Hey Ladies, Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun and um, well something else maybe. Oh and I forgot to uh, talk about Ask for Janice which was kind of a forgettable interlude but it was not bad, it was just 11 seconds, don't even, I didn't even notice that, that it was on. Like a uh, hey, uh, five piece chicken dinner. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, yeah, Shake Your Rump, Shake Your Rump, Eggman, Hey Ladies, and Looking Down the Barrel of a Gun. Those are my favorite tracks of the album. Maybe I will add more favorite tracks of the album if I get into this album a bit more. But for now, um, I would say, like, yeah, I do say that. Um, I need to get into it a bit more, but it, it is actually one of my favorite albums because. Uh, some of my favorite singles from the Beastie Boys are on air, and uh, the epic of, of you know the epic the ending the epic fucking no the epic at the ending is really dope. Um, you know the the opening track is great. Uh, the production is amazing. I really the best their best produced album maybe, and they, I believe they produced all their albums themselves for the most part. You know Rick Rubin did the first one, so there you go. So um, yeah, one of my favorite albums ever. Uh, I will all of it. Doesn't maybe doesn't come over like that, but I do really love it. So I just haven't listened to it in a while. So there you go. Uh, yeah, and because of that um, sentence right there that I just said, you know, the me fucking um, yeah, it's one of my favorite albums. So of course I'm gonna. So of course that means I will give it a ten out of ten because it's one of my favorite albums ever. So uh, maybe it doesn't go, come over like that, but um, I do really love it. I think it's a great album. Um, yeah, and I definitely think you should check it out. It's arguably their best album. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it in the, com in the comments down below. I really enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it down below. 
uh, abonneren om en een slag op zijn kwartjes channel om voor videos live te Let me know what you think about this all Paul's boutique. Uh, what do you think about the Beastie Boys in general? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you uh, don't care for them? Have you never heard of them? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.